Mr. Chairman, I would uh, call up uh, amendment SIL 23885, SIL 23885. Uh, this amendment would simply condemn the racist things that have been said about Justice Clarence Thomas. Anyone seek recognition on this amendment? Well, Senator Kennedy, is it safe to say that you condemn all racist comments and attacks on all justices? You would not include the other African American justices in the court. If the senator would agree to put that into the amendment, I think we, we could accept it. You happy to change it? You say. So to be clear, Senator Byrne, you're talking about simply saying that we condemn racism against any justice, but, that's, that's but he will only put one justice in? That's right. I, I don't understand the reluctance to accept the fact that Justice Clarence Thomas, who happens to be a black man, has been the, the butt of a lot of racist statements. And I don't understand the reluctance to condemn those. And that's what my amendment does. I don't want to water it down. I don't want to bubble wrap it. I don't want to sugarcoat it. I want it to say, biggest Dallas, the United States Senate condemns all these racist things that have been said about Justice Clarence Thomas. Now, if somebody wants to offer another amendment to condemn every racist thing that has ever been said in the history of ever, I will vote for it. But this one is about Clarence Thomas. And I'll support going through justice by justice, each of them, all of whom have, ha, 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 anybody who's ever served on the Supreme Court. But this one, and I think we all ought to go on record, is about Clarence Thomas. Will Senator Kennedy yield for a question? Yes, sir. I'm reading your amendment, which I think is very well drafted. One of the things you cite is on July 13th, just a few days ago, 2023, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison disgustingly likened Justice Thomas to a house slave from the film Django Unchained. Are there any of the other nine justices who have been subject to such racist attack in the last few days from a sitting Democrat in the state of Minnesota who disgusting, has anyone else been subject to those kind of attacks as frequently, as brazenly, and as unapologetically? No, sir, and it would be unconscionable for this committee not to condemn that kind of rhetoric for Clarence Thomas. Chairman, um, despite Senator Graham's view of the breadth of this bill and the debate, I consider this to be not relevant to the matter at hand. And further, it specifically requests the Biden administration to inject itself politically into a law enforcement decision that the Biden administration, I think quite properly, has avoided uh, getting involved with. So I urge my colleagues to vote no. Any further discussion on this amendment? If not, are you going to offer a second degree then on the? I have that? some discussion. Senator Kennedy, your amendment. How can you not condemn a statement calling, call, call, calling Justice Clarence Thomas a house slave? 
Come on, folks. That's all this amendment does. I mean, does anybody here support that kind of rhetoric? I don't. I don't think you do. And this kind of rhetoric hasn't been directed toward John's Robert, John Roberts. It hasn't been directed toward, toward Neil Gorsuch. It's been directed toward Clarence Thomas. And it's un-American, it's unconscionable, and I can't believe we wouldn't condemn it. I don't care how many lawyers can dance on the head of a pen. Don't, 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 don't try to pretend that this is a, some sort of a, a, a technical uh, mistake in this amendment. It's not complicated. You don't have to be a senior at Caltech to figure it out. It says all of this stuff about Clarence Thomas calling him a house slave and other racist, disgusting statements, we condemn. Now, you either condemn it or you don't. And that's all this amendment does. If I may respond, I, for one, do condemn that sort of rhetoric. But the senator's amendment does more than that. It calls upon the Biden administration to enforce Section 1507 of Title 18 United States Code to protect Supreme Court justices, including Justice Thomas, in light of flagrant violations of the law designed to intimidate justices. And we've had a lot of time in this committee trying to make sure that the White House and the political side of the executive branch is kept out of internal Department of Justice law enforcement decisions. And in the light of that, I again ask my colleagues to vote no unless there's a second degree amendment that clears that problem. Mr. Chairman. I respect my colleague, Senator Whitehouse, and he's better at me counting the number of lawyers that can dance on the head of a pen. But this is a real simple amendment. If you support the racist things that have been said about Clarence Thomas, then vote against this amendment. If you think the things that have been said about Clarence Thomas are ra racist to the marrow, and you condemn them, then vote for this amendment. Someone else seek recognition, Senator Lee. I support this amendment wholeheartedly, and I find it difficult to understand, number one, how someone could oppose an amendment whose sole purpose is to condemn racist slurs used repeatedly, publicly, and viciously against one Supreme Court justice. Now, yes, other things have been said about other justices. That's true. Other things have been said about other justices on both sides of the aisle. Justice Thomas is unique on the court in that, to my knowledge, he's the only current member of the court who's been attacked racially, even in supposedly polite society, attacked by television news personalities using those same racist terms. So I, I find it difficult to understand why anyone would object to sending that message. Now, as to the second objection, I also find it very difficult to understand why someone would, would oppose this. We've already established nothing objectionable about wanting to weigh in and, and say those things shouldn't happen, they should be retracted and they, they should never occur again. But now we hear an objection based on the additional fact that this amendment calls on the Biden administration to enforce 18 U.S.C. Section 1507. These same verbal attacks invariably culminate in and lead to and encourage and foment through groups like Jane's Revenge, the kinds of activities outside of justices' homes, that leave them in a physically vulnerable position with their personal safety and security being threatened and violated. There's nothing about this that says exactly what enforcement action has to take place at exactly what location in what moment. There's nothing in this that doesn't take away a, a degree of uh, discretion on the part of law enforcement officers. But the truth is this is not being enforced at the homes of the justices. 
it isn't. And, and we know that it's not. We know that decision is deliberate because of the leaked internal memoranda obtained by our colleague, Senator Katie Britt from Alabama, who received them, I believe, from a whistleblower. Second degree to strike the last clause. So we know that they're being instructed not to enforce this at the homes of the justices. I, I find it almost impossible to understand how someone would object to this amendment, either on that basis or any other. Senator Cruz. Mr. Chairman, two arguments have been proffered against Senator, Senator Kennedy's amendment. The first argument is, well, gosh, maybe there have been racist things said against other justices. I will point out objectively the venom and bigotry directed at Clarence Thomas is qualitatively different from any of the other eight justices. This resolution gives multiple instances of elected Democrats currently in office launching racial epithets with complete impunity. It cites how Representative Benny Thompson of Mississippi, a Democrat member of Congress, called Justice Thomas a, quote, Uncle Tom. It cites how just a week ago, the current sitting Minnesota Attorney General, another Democrat, Keith Ellison, disgustingly likened Justice Thomas to a house slave, and a house slave from the film Django Unchained, a particularly vicious and loathsome character from that movie. If the chairman wishes to point to instances of any elected officials using racial epithets towards any of the other eight justices, I will happily condemn them. I'm not aware of any. Might there be some lunatic on Twitter who said something? Sure, they're idiots out on Twitter. But these are not fringe characters. This is a senior Democrat in the House of Representatives who refuses to, to apologize. And this is the current attorney general in the state of Minnesota. And so everyone should understand, look, I expect a party line vote on this. I expect all the Democrats to say no. But understand, everyone watching this will interpret that quite rightly to say, you agree these kinds of racial insults at Justice Thomas are perfectly acceptable. Justice Kennedy said he assumed the Democrats denounced these statements. I have to say, I haven't heard any members of this committee denounce what Keith Ellison said. I haven't heard anyone call on Keith Ellison to retract and apologize. The Democrat Attorney General in Minnesota, I haven't heard a word about that. The second argument given was the argument given by Senator Whitehouse, and he says, well, the part that is offensive of this is it calls on the Department of Justice to enforce the law. Just stop and repeat that to yourself again. So it is now the position of Democrats that it is unacceptable to ask the Department of Justice to enforce the law. It is an existing criminal statute, section 1507, that makes it a federal crime to protest at the home of, of, of a justice with the purpose of intimidating them. This Department of Justice refuses to enforce that law. And I will say, with the argument being made by Democrats right now, it, it reveals the whole game. The reason the Biden Justice Department ignores federal law and won't actually prosecute the criminals who are trying to intimidate and threaten Supreme Court justices is because the Biden administration supports that criminal threatening. And the reason now that Judiciary Committee Democrats are being told, vote no on Senator Kennedy's bill, is because Senate Democrats on the Judiciary Committee support that violent threatening of justices. This bill is not about ethics. It's about a double standard applied to justices with whom Democrats disagree. It is designed to delegitimize the court. It is applying rules that are not applied to liberal justices like Stephen Breyer and Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Sonia Sotomayor, who have committed conduct virtually identical to that of Justice Thomas and others. But the Democrats on this committee are mad at the Supreme Court because it's issued decisions faithful to the Constitution that are inconvenient for the political agenda of Democrats. 
Look, we're defined by the votes we make here. If every Democrat happily votes no, understand you're telling your constituents you think it's perfectly fine to call a Supreme Court justice a house slave, and you can't muster up the courage to say that's beyond the line. Senator Cruz, would you yield to a question? Happily. Would you read one more time for the record that statement about Justice Thomas and who made it? On July 13th, 2023, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison, the currently sitting Attorney General, offensively likened Justice Thomas to a house slave from the film Django Unchained. And by the way, there's a long pattern of that. On April 27, 2014, Democrat Representative Benny Thompson of Mississippi, again another sitting Democrat member of Congress, used racially charged language to characterize Justice Thomas, including calling him an Uncle Tom. I'll point out also recently, on February 14, 2023, Georgia State Senator Emanuel Jones used similar racially charged language to characterize Justice Thomas, including by calling him an Uncle Tom figure. The choice Democrats have to make, do you think it's all right to call a justice who dares disagree with you an Uncle Tom? I think it's bigoted. But perhaps Democrats hold themselves to a different standard. Let me uh, respond. Uh, We condemn racist attacks of any kind from any source, elected or unelected. We have had members, current members of the United States Senate who've had to apologize publicly for the statements they have made involving the issue of race. We should not compromise on that integrity of that principle regardless of whether the victim is a Democrat or a Republican, a Supreme Court justice or not. So I'm gonna propose an amendment uh, to this Kennedy Amendment, which I think will encapsulate our position on this side. And if you want to go to page three of the amendment and follow along, it's pretty simple. On page three, line 13, to insert after the word against any current or former Supreme Court justice, including, and then it preserves the rest of the language you have in that line, Senator Kennedy, and to strike on page four, paragraph five in its entirety. I would offer that as an amendment uh, in an effort to bring this to a bipartisan conclusion. uh, And it is now the pending amendment before the committee. Any comment, question? Mr. Mr. Chairman, can I just, can I ask? So- Go ahead, Senator As the second degree amendment, you would strike the name of Clarence Thomas? No. Include every word on pages one through three of the amendment I've just inserted additional language to say any current or former Supreme Court justice, including. So there's no other change. Would the chairman consider making those amendments separately? Because the first amendment you suggested, I'd be willing to vote in favor of. The second amendment striking the paragraph calling on the Department of Justice to actually enforce current and existing federal criminal law, I could not vote for. But if you broke them up separately, I'd be happy to vote for the first one. I have no objection to that. I think that's a reasonable request procedurally. Are there any other comments or questions? If not, then the first, second, the first second degree amendment will be as follows. On page three, line 13, to insert after the word against, quote, any current or former Supreme Court justice, including, go on to the rest of the amendment. Will the chairman yield for a question? Happy to yield, Senator Kennedy. Does it mention Justice Thomas by name? Your, your amendment does completely. Yep, yeah, but, but, but does your, your amendment, does it take it says, out the reference specifically to Justice Thomas? It says including Justice Thomas. Okay, that answers including my including question. Including those likening him. So I, I don't delete any words from your original amendment related to Justice Thomas. Can we do this by voice vote? It sounds like this may, the First Amendment may be agreeable. Yes or no? Senator Kennedy? Okay. All those in favor of the Durbin Second Degree Amendment as described to the committee say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Depending on the other chair, the ayes have it. So the second Second Degree Amendment, the amendment is is agreed to, the amendment's agreed to. The Second Degree Amendment strikes on page four all of section five. I know that is not one that we're going to get bipartisan agreement on, so I suggest the clerk call the roll. 